Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Wealthologist Weekly. I'm your host, as always, Chris Hobart, the Wealthologist. And today we're ready to dive into some more of the most important financial topics that impact both your wallet and the economy. Now today, we're going to start with a big one. It's the changes in monetary policy that happened since 2008 and how these changes continue to shape our economy. So you remember 2008, right? Man, a couple of really crummy years known as the Great Recession. Now, during this financial crisis, the Federal Reserve made a significant pivot in how they handled monetary policy, moving from what was called a scarce reserve model to what is now known as quantitative easing or QE. Now, what does that mean? Well, it meant that there was a huge, and when I say huge, I'm talking huge influx of money into the economy. Uh, essentially, it increased the Fed's balance sheet from $870 billion in August of 2008 to an astounding $7.4 trillion today. Now, for those of you that like math and percentages, as I kind of do, uh, that's a 747% increase. Holy smokes, that's crazy. Now, with all the extra money, the Fed, they had to put safeguards in place to prevent inflation from going crazy. Uh, and so now banks face higher capital requirements and increased demands for liquidity. Now, despite being flush with cash, banks are actually more restricted in how much they can lend out, which is kind of crazy. And with everyone having more than enough reserves, banks no longer need to borrow from each other on a daily basis. And essentially, this has killed what was called the federal funds market. Now, here's where politics come into play. Generally, low interest rates are more politically popular. Uh, why? Well, they help with cheaper mortgages and car loans, which tends to be great for voters. And let's face it, who doesn't like cheaper rates at, at different times in life? But when we talk about savers, this isn't so great um, because if it's sustained too long, those retirees or those savers, they kind of get punished. Now, since 2008, interest rates have been below inflation 80% of the time and at roughly 0% for nearly half of the past 15 years. Now, all of these low rates, they seem like a good idea at the time. But what's happened is they've led banks to make riskier decisions, thinking low rates would last forever. Now, with interest rates rising to start combat this current inflation issue we're dealing with, we're starting to see some fallout. Banks are recording massive losses on loans and bonds that were once considered relatively safe bets. It's one of the reasons why we're seeing more bank failures recently. Now, just last week, the Supreme Court ruled that the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau can remain an independent agency, even though it's funded by the Fed and not Congress. Now, this is critical because as the Fed loses money, it's actually the taxpayers who are footing the bill through treasury borrowing. This ruling uh, might seem like a small detail, kind of, oh, it just happened. But I got to tell you, it underscores how deeply the taxpayer is tied to the decisions of the Fed. So you're probably wondering, what does this mean for you and for me and for our families and for everybody? Well, it means that the actions of the Federal Reserve can actually have a profound impact on your personal finances, uh, from the interest rates you pay on loans to the stability of banks where you keep your money. Understanding these policies and asking smart questions uh, can help you make smarter financial decisions. Now, for today, that's all we're going to dig, dig into. In the coming week, we're going to be digging into more, and, uh, and we'll be covering that in the Wealthologist Weekly as that comes up. So join me next week as we continue to unravel some of these complexities of the financial world and the financial markets, hopefully in a way that makes sense to you. Until then, I'm Chris Hobart, the Wealthologist, wishing you a very prosperous week.